Welcome to the Bicon webcast. Today is um, Thursday, January 28th, 2010. Uh, welcome all of you who are watching us. We have um, several hundred. We have uh, 55 countries and I think somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 states with us. So uh, today it will be the uncovering. Uh, this is a radiograph that was taken just now. And as you see, this is a 5 by 6 millimeter implant placed in uh, a location where an 8 millimeter would have been easily placed. This implant was placed um, roughly about a millimeter or so below the crest of the bone initially, but all of that bone and, and the, the weight has created a favorable environment and we have regeneration of uh, the bone over the shoulder of the implant. And this depth of implant is, is acceptable for, uh, for the Bicon restorative techniques as it allows for uh, our restoring it uh, with relative ease actually. So m the plan is to um, uncover uh, this implant through a very conservative flap, remove the black healing plug, then uh, take an implant level impression and just place a healing abutment which is sort of the, the healing uh, component with any other type of system as the uh, custom made abutment and crown which are fused together in an integrated abutment crown uh, restoration are being fabricated, the soft tissue will be taking its final shape as well and then it will be adapted to fit around the final restoration. You see that the crest is healed where that uh, tooth had been extracted and the implant placed. So that gives us exactly the indication where we're going to make our flap. So when we um, make our incision, before I go into a punch type of incision, I will make a uh, trapdoor semilunar incision that will allow us to um, feel any of that will allow us to close back over should we have to do any more work with the uh, with the implant and I can already see the black healing plug mm -hmm. suction on the top there yeah. the same perforation that's that exists inside the plug we will use that as well to engage and then plug the uh, or remove the black healing plug with it. So you just thread it in, twist it clockwise and simply remove the black healing plug. So we place this same guide pin that I just used minutes ago to verify location and position. Now we will do the same except we can take it and move it, try to move it and you can see that this implant is solid. I can move the whole head, probably lift the head off the chair with it. So we know that this is pretty solid in there. Now that we know that it's, it's uh, integrated, we'll go ahead and cut the tag as if it were a punch and just by carving out a total of a circle of that soft tissue in the center. Okay, come out please. Okay. So if we look again at the angulation and location, we have full expectation that a, a straight abutment would be adequate. We won't modify anything in the bone at this point because we have full thorough unfettered access to it. Okay, We will now proceed to take a uh, implant level impression. This is a titanium implant level impression post. You place it. Does that hurt? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're, we place this by finger pressure. It has a plastic sleeve. Okay? It is very simple to the point that I, even I can do it, you know? So I place it in and we uh, put the uh, green plastic sleeve over it. And now we'll go ahead and take an implant level impression. When the tray is half filled, I get the signal. Then we will use the light body. And that basically locks around the uh, green plastic sleeve and then the uh, tray is uh, transferred. We have a timer for four minutes. It's a closed tray technique and the key is that the uh, impression pin 
stays in the implant and the sleeve that goes over the pin um, is left behind. That pin is, is placed by finger pressure, so it should come out by finger pressure as well. And it is reusable. It's autoclavable and reusable. Okay, now a healing abutment would be the best thing to place in this area. And we have this uh, type of uh, healing abutment that's disposable. It has a high mesial and distal um, curvature. This helps it support the papillae. When you have this kind of uh, mesial and distal pressure, you maintain the height of the papillae. It also can be tapped into place so that it is fully seated. And as you can see, that's it. That's, that's how simple it is to at least uncover an implant and, and, and place the uh, healing abutment. Yes, the, the key, however, when using the, uh, the two-part impression, that is extremely unlikely to happen because the uh, impression post goes in by friction, uh, which uh, mimics the friction of the locking taper, whereas the, the impression sleeve is a plastic which fits loosely over, uh, you know, precisely but loosely over the, the part of the uh, um, impression post. Very simple, because we don't need an 8 millimeter. A 6 millimeter works just fine. Um, I mean, there's not much else to say. If you feel comfortable using an 8 millimeter more than 6, use that. If you feel comfortable like we do with 6 millimeters, this is pretty much what we place now. We place 8 millimeters when we need to have uh, more stability because we're engaging more of the apex. But most of the time, it's 6 and 5 millimeter long implants. When we are placing a, um, uh, a non-shouldered abutment for restoration uh, at, with, an implant, with an abutment level impression, what you need to do, for those of, uh, of you who are new to the implant system, what you need to do is create an imprint uh, in the bone that corresponds precisely to the shape of the undersurface of the implant of the bicon abutment. And for that, we use what's called a sulcus reamer. The sulcus reamer actually uh, removes enough bone, just enough bone, to allow the abutment to sit unfettered into the implant. And when we tap them together, the two parts, the implant and the abutment, will come and, uh, and get coupled together um, to engage the locking taper. And so in this case, because I am not selecting the final um, abutment size. We will let the lab do that for us. And because I had unfettered access fully to the uh, implant well, evidenced by the ease of placement of the guide pin and of the uh, subsequently of the uh, uh, impression post uh, placement, I didn't need to do any sulcus streaming as yet. Okay? The question would have been if that uh, healing abutment did not sit in there. I'm gonna, I may have done some, but it also did sit properly. So what has happened in this case is the bone had enough room or allowed us enough room to seat all of what we needed to do um, in there to, to achieve it at this point. Had we had any hindrances to that, we would have had to remove enough bone, but just enough bone to seat those parts. Don't be overzealous and just remove all of the bone around the area that you've worked so hard to recreate or to regenerate and lose it because that creates, again, a, a void that will be occupied hopefully by soft tissue, but in the worst case scenario, by oral uh, bacteria and plaque, etc. So just create as much room just to have it completely uh, sealed and filled by the implant and abutment components. And again, once more, I want to thank you for your attention, and uh, we are out. Uh, thank you all.